hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about epilepsy in pregnancy so how we uh, how we manage an epilepsy disorder in pregnancy so six out of thousand pregnancy is complicated by seizure disorder okay so this is a very important uh, 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 parameter like uh, seizure frequency is increased in 30% cases of pregnancy it remains same in 13th percent of pregnancy and it decreased in 50% of pregnancy cases so on an average pregnancy decreases seizure activity but it can increase in 37 okay now when we talk about seizure and pregnancy the main uh, as a gynecologist as obstetrician your main target or your main concern is concerned is a, a, a congenital anomaly or teratogenicity of the drugs the anti-epileptic drugs we will call it AED in this video now what we are we are concerned about AED the side effects of AED on the newborn baby so this is our prime concern when we talk about seizures. This AEDs can do teratogenicity, neonatal withdrawal effects, vitamin K deficiency in neonates and developmental delay in the babies born to the mother who is taking AED during the pregnancy. Okay, now <clears throat> there are a lot of studies has been done so far some things are just uh, conflicting and some things are clear for example the one thing is clear is what AD increases congenital anomaly we have done lots of studies and uh, uh, so far in the literature available if you see the most of the literature is saying that confirmly that the, the drugs the anti-epileptic drugs increases chances of congenital anomaly in babies okay but seizure control is still very important and it clearly outweighs the risk we want a complete seizure control during pregnancy or in antenatal period or even in postnatal period so seizure control is very important after we achieve a con seizure control, then we can decrease the doses of AEDs. So the AED is confirmedly doing congenital anomaly, but still we have to give them into the pregnancy. Why? Because we need seizure control. It clearly outfit the risk. So now this dilemma happens that we have to give the drugs which are actually teratogenic drugs. There is no AED or no drug, no anti-epileptic drug which have no uh, absolutely very very less or no uh, risk of genetic anomaly. Still, we have to go for that. So this is the dilemma. Now, all drugs, all AEDs can cause significant significant fetal deformation, but certain AEDs, some AEDs are more strongly linked, and some AEDs are less strongly linked. Or we still need studies to make those uh, drugs, the newer drugs, to know how much uh, side effects or how much content anomaly they are doing. So what you need to learn as an undergraduate student is each and every AED is causing the teratogenicity. Some AEDs, we have a studies that they are uh, more strongly linked to the congenital malformation. Okay. Uh, and the thing is we need to use a high dose folic acid that will decrease the risk in many studies it will say it is saying that they are saying that the use of high dose folic acid preconceptionally and even in pregnancy antenatally uh, risk, decreases the risk of congenital anomaly okay <clears throat> one very important aspect of this case is the patients with epilepsy whether they whether they are taking drugs or not whether they are taking uh, AEDs or not they are itself they have increased chances of 
congenital anomaly and we have no clear cut reason why it happens if the if the mother is having a seizure disorder then there are chances higher chances of the babies having congenital anomalies so it doesn't make any difference whether they are taking uh, drugs or not so itself pregnancy is having increased chance of congenital anomaly now now this thing this uh, table is a very very important table very important table is the crux of all the studies i have seen or i have just uh, uh, read yet all the literature what i am trying to what i am trying to under make you understand is uh, three basic uh, meta analysis are uh, described here 1 2 and 3 i am not going with the names of meta analysis but this ones are actually uh, very good rcts or meta analysis which actually uh, says the number like a pregnant lady with seizure disorder who is taking anti epileptic drug have 4.6% in one study 5.7% in second study and 5.3% in third study chances of having congenital anomaly okay now the, the pregnant ladies having seizure disorder but they are not taking any aids not taking any anti epileptic drugs has 8% chance in one preg in one study 0% chance in second 0% chance in third of having congenital anomalies in the babies in their babies so this is conflicting for example one very good meta analysis saying that that there are increased chances of seizure disorder but a, a subsequent studies also saying that there are absolutely zero chances of congenital anomaly in the patients who, who is not taking anti epileptic drugs so again it's conflict uh, very conflicting results what you need to uh, what you need to uh, understand is a pregnant lady with con uh, with a seizure disorder have a higher chances of congenital anomaly but a pregnant lady with seizure disorder on the anti epileptic drug have still higher more higher chances of higher chances of congenital anomaly so this is the crux of the studies i am talking about now what i am talking about what is confirmed still that that every aed increases the congenital anomaly okay and there is a syndrome called fetal anti convulsion syndrome okay so <clears throat> all uh, all the aeds do a fetal con anti convulsion syndrome and uh, that is include behavior abnormalities congenital anomalies learning difficulties gross motor delays all these things all aed can do these things okay now one thing is very very uh, very uh, uh, very confirm is that the polytherapy is more dangerous than monotherapy monotherapy means one drug of anti epileptic drug one drug should be continued in the pregnancy rather than the combination of different drugs so one drug will uh, do a less harm than uh, 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 some polytherapy okay now now when the uh, when the patient is taking some drug or some anti epileptic drug and uh, if she becomes pregnant then what we should do should we change the medication no we should not change the medication actually we should continue the medications why we should do it why we should do it because already uh, when the patient uh, comes to you with the pregnancy on booking scan or a booking uh, visit then Uh, she already has been taken this drug and the harm is already is there so now changing drug will not be effective what you can do is you can go for uh, 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 newer drugs newer available anti epileptic drugs uh, before conception okay pre conceptionally so this thing you can actually do and try to avoid valproate as much as possible valproate is considered as a uh, more linked to the congenital anomalies so avoid try to avoid valproate but if valproate already going on then you can continue valproate you you don't need to change that valproate okay now 
Now, what is the management uh, of uh, epilepsy in pregnancy? Pre-pregnancy. So, the preconceptional counseling is very important. Uh, when the patient is on uh, disorder, a seizure disorder, in a, is on some AEDs, then what you should do? You should refer them to a neurologist to review the diagnosis. To review the diagnosis and uh, and confirm the diagnosis and uh, adjust the doses of AED. Okay, if the seizure free interval is more than two years, then discuss withdrawal with the neurologist. Okay, if the neurologist find that it's okay to discontinue uh, the AED, then you can go for it. Because some some there are different kind of seizures. Some seizures have a very very higher rate of relapse if if you stop the drug. So those kind in those kind of cases you should not stop the drug, but uh, uh, leave this thing to the neurologist. Okay, he will decide whether to uh, discontinue or not. Single drug treatment with minimum required dose should be preferred. Folic acid should be given on higher doses like 5 mg per day at least two months before the conception is happening. Okay. Risk of seizure in the children that are born to the uh, parents is if the one parent is affected, 4% risk is there. If one parent plus, plus one offspring is affected, there is 10% risk. And if two parents are affected by seizure disorder, the children, the babies will have a 15% of chances of developing this disease, developing uh, seizure disorder in their life. Now, antenatal uh, uh, management, we should be very, very cautious or we should be very, very uh, uh, vigilant about the congenital anomalies. So, all the things that is available, whether to check any anomaly in the baby should be uh, done, like, uh, like a serial USG scans, 20 at 20 weeks target scans, NIPTs, uh, uh, double marker, triple marker, all those tests which actually uh, give you any anomaly risk, then should then it should be done. Vitamin K supplementation should be also done. If the steroids need to be given in the pregnancy, then the doses should be doubled because AEDs are enzyme inducers, and that my uh, that my uh, you need higher doses of steroid than usual. Intrapartum care. Vaginal delivery is preferred. A caesarean section is only done uh, for obstetric reasons. One thing you need to uh, concentrate on that is the risk of seizure is increased during labor. Why? Because the lack of sleep, lack of sleep, hyperventilations, and sometimes the, uh, the patient is very uh, anxious and uh, mentally unstable. So that's why. The risk of seizures is increased, and if if the patient is of di uh, di well diagnosed case of seizure or epilepsy, and he and she is on any drug, and if she develops a seizure, if she throws a seizure in in during the delivery or during the labor, then it's not an indication of seizure infection. Okay, it can be well managed by IV benzodiazepines. Postpartum care, mm, breastfeeding, uh, if you talk about breastfeeding, all the AEDs, all the drugs um, secret in the breast milk. But still, the advantages of breast milk is very, very higher than the risks. So, breast, breastfeeding should be encouraged. It should not be discouraged. Neonet should be provided vitamin K supplementations. If you are using contraceptions after the delivery, the dose of the contraceptive, hormonal contraceptive should be increased. Be care of the baby is a very important and very uh, delicate aspect. Don't bath the baby alone because you can throw a seizure sometime, anytime. Breastfeeding on, should be done on the floor so that if you throw the uh, seizure, then baby should be on, on the uh, ground and it should not be thrown. Okay, so this thing is very important. So, this is how you manage the epilepsy in pregnancy. Thank you, friends.